Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Scotland and we're returning to a brewery who I've not reviewed anything from in about two years. So for the first time since 2015 we're going to review a beer from the Loch Ness Brewery and since I reviewed the, the last beer from these guys there has been a few big changes to the, the way that this company works so I'll tell you about that in a little minute. But for this one we are going to have a taste of the darkness and as you may have guessed from the name this one is a stout and it comes in at 4 point. 5% ABV. So as I've always told you with Scottish breweries it usually tends to be that they'll either brew the new American styles or the kind of more traditional real ale styles. You usually get real ale breweries or craft breweries but Loch Ness Brewery was one that I always found really interesting because they kind of straddled the border a little bit. They brewed the more traditional beer styles but they did tend to put a little bit more of that kind of new wave American edge on them. I always enjoyed the lightness and the hoppiness. They were some really quite nice beers actually so I'm interested to try something from their core range that is at the completely other end of the spectrum. And this one's actually quite a highly rated beer as well, as an 88 overall on rate beer and within the style. As I always say though, don't take rate beer as the gospel. It is a good barometer and it gives you a fairly decent idea. But like I said, I've had some positive experiences from this brewery in the past and if you get the chance to try some of their beers I do recommend that you have a little look at them but anyway, as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward, all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Loch Ness Brewery before no doubt there will be some more in the near future there's all the usual social media, Facebook, Twitter, Untapped all of those sorts of things if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. There are playlists for the beers from different countries. Do check out what the one for all the Scottish beers. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about the Loch Ness Brewery then. So the Loch Ness Brewery was originally attached to the Ben Leva Hotel on the shores of Loch Ness, but the brewery and hotel were owned by brothers Alan and Stephen Crossland. And George George Witherspoon was always quite instrumental in this brewery as well. But these guys decided to add a small two-barrel plant to the hotel's pub and start brewing their own beers. And the first of the beers were served in January of 2011. But they proved to be very, very popular. So the company decided to start distributing the beers on a small scale. And apparently, a lot of help in the early days came from Angus McRory at the Isle of Skye Brewery but these beers proved to be very very popular and the kind of unfortunate thing was that the Loch Ness Brewery decided to expand but from what I gather their expansion didn't go all that well so unfortunately in 2016 the company went into insolvency but the Loch Ness beer brand was actually taken over jointly by Rory Cameron who was the director of the Cobbs Bakery based in Drumnadroch where these guys were from and Sam Faircliffe who is the managing director of the Cairngorm Brewery in Aviemore so all of the Loch Ness Brewery beers are now brewed at the Cairngorm Brewery in Aviemore as far as I know. But Stephen Crossland, one of the original founders, and also George Witherspoon as well, they are now part of the D-Side Brewery, which is up uh, just to the west of Aberdeen. They produce some interesting beers as well. They're a bit more of a kind of traditional style brewery, uh, even more so than these guys were anyway. But they produce some really quite nice beers. Just to list some of the ones out of their core range for you, there's the Lightness, which is a golden ale, the Wilderness, which is the Amber Bitter, the Redness, which is a Red Bitter, uh, Loch Ness, which is a traditional style ale, they have this guy uh, here which is the darkness and they also had hoppiness which I believe was kind of leaning towards an American style R IPA and uh, a few other things as well but they do some really nice stuff and if you get the chance to try some of these, these Loch Ness beers they're really interesting because like I said to you they kind of straddle the line between being some of the traditional real ales and uh, having a little bit of that kind of American hoppiness and American sweetness to them so a very interesting brewery and one that I do recommend you check out if you're interested in Scottish beer I think this is the first time I'm reviewing one of the beers when they've got this artwork scheme on them. I have to admit, I do like that new art scheme that they have on them. So yeah, so anyway, that's all you need to know about the brewery. Like I said, the website and things are in the description below if you want to have a look at those. So yeah, nicely presented beer. On the side here it says, a full flavoursome stout with chocolate malt and roast barley combining beautifully with clear Loch Ness water and Nessie, our very own yeast strain. A, f a creamy flavoursome head with aromas of coffee and sweet chocolate leading to hints of espresso and luxurious black cherry vastly unfathomable 
The Loch Ness has long held its reputation as a dark, mysterious stretch of water blessed with mythical healing powers and home to the world's most infamous monster, Nessie. At Loch Ness Brewery, we harness the power of this water at its source to brew our award-winning ales to be enjoyed by free thinkers and beer drinkers everywhere. LochNessBrewery.com So yeah, 4.5% stout this one, best before the 28th of December 2017. So yeah, nicely presented. Plain bottle cap on this one, of course, and there you can see that really nice kind of that nice little bit of artwork on it there. I really do like the artwork that they put on these uh, these Loch Ness beers, but a really nice looking beer, and we'll get it out and get on with the tasting then. So yeah, nice little smoky opening there, and we'll get it out into the glass. And I'll tell you something, you can smell some of that nice kind of chocolatey malt coming out of this, just as you open up the bottle. There's a bit of chocolate and almost woody character in there. So yeah. Aye, and as you would expect, this beer has poured a really nice kind of ebony rosewood colour. You can smell a little bit of that almost black malt character coming out of it too. But yeah, as you can see, a nice two-thirds, maybe three-quarter finger of a frothy beige tan head on this one. Some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see the beer isn't transparent at all. If I hold it up to the light, I do suspect that it would be a bit transparent, but just really the, just the darkness of the colour there is preventing you from seeing that. And there's a little bit of an almost kind of chestnut coloured edge to it. You can see a little bit of ruby around the edge of the glass with this beer but it looks really nice pretty much exactly what you'd expect for a stout so let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on Ooh, that's really nice i do like that it does actually smell really quite rich and it's def i'm pretty sure it's scott there's a bit of scottish malt in here and that's one of the things, you know, when you t try a lot of different beers from different countries, you can start to pick up little things like that. And uh, with Scottish beer, that's one of the things I always love when I come home to Scotland, is just trying some of these Scottish beers and getting that Scottish malt. Of course, we could never really grow hops in Scotland. I don't think it's been tried in the modern times right enough, but of course, Scotland was always a huge malt-producing country, and it's just a bit nostalgic for me to go back to beers like this. But that smells really nice, so... You can smell a little bit of that kind of roasted black malt backbone, but it's really very chocolatey. This one, as you, as they were saying on the bottle, it is really quite chocolatey. But there's a bit, there's a good bit of a kind of woody and nutty character to this one, and that's kind of always what you get with the Scottish malts. There's a wee bit of an almost kind of grainy cereal character in there as well, and that's kind of just mixing in. It's just kind of forming the backbone with a little bit of that kind of roasted black character that I was talking about. It almost just overpowers it a little bit, and you get the chocolate sweetness on the top. There's maybe a little bit of a kind of brown sugar note in there as well, maybe a kind of slightly darker caramel. But I think really it's mainly it's mainly chocolatey. But there's that kind of brown bready woody kind of nutty and cereally character that you expect from Scottish malt. It could, there could be a little bit of Maris Otter in there right enough, something like that. It does have a little bit of that almost English malt quality to it as well, which is quite interesting. But just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one. And it is surprising that you're getting a nose that's as complex as this out of a 4.5% beer, because you normally wouldn't expect that. There's a little bit of an earthy hop character, which again is what you'd expect, and you can get just a little bit of a red fruity note as well so there's some nice kind of candied red fruit esters coming out of the beer as well it always reminds me a little bit of these kind of haribo star mix sweets that you get the little heart shaped sweeties and the little kind of gummy beers that you get in there there is a little bit of that but definitely a kind of candied red fruit ester maybe figs if you're pushing it to be honest but it does smell really nice so as I always say just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer particularly with this one because as I said it's quite unusual to get a nose this complex out of a 4.5% beer. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. This one is the Darkness from the Loch Ness Brewery, originally based in Drum the Drocket in the Highlands, but now brewed by the Cairngorm Brewery up in Aviemore. Let's get stuck in. Slange. I have to say that is pretty good. You know, I can see the rate beer rating, I can see right away why this one is one of the kind of more highly rated traditional stout beers if you like. Yeah, that's pretty good. The first thing I'm noticing about this one is it is quite light in the mouthfeel. The one complaint I would maybe have about this beer is that it just isn't quite as heavy in the mouthfeel as, as it maybe should be. I think on cask this beer 
this beer would be really good if you took this to like a real ale festival or something like that and had it on cask with it without the carbonation and stuff this would probably be one of the highest rated beers that you'd find in the festival I would think at least in Scotland that's a really nice stout but yeah I'll stick to that statement I think this one it, de it probably suits the cask conditioning a little bit better it's just a little bit light in the mouth, but the most important thing, of course, is the taste. To be honest with this beer, it's that good that that really is quite nitpicking. So yeah, I think on the first taste, it's definitely fair to say that this one fits into the kind of traditional stout category rather than the, the more American style stout. So we'll think about it like that. So yeah, this is good. So with this one, you get a nice little bit of, you can feel there's a little bit of that roasty black malt backbone in there. You can get that. On top of that, you can feel some of this almost brown bready character. There's definitely a kind of cereally element to this one. And that, to me, makes me think that there is some kind of Scottish malt in there. You can really get that kind of almost, almost trademark grainy sort of cereally. A brown bready character out of this beer. There's a lot of chocolate in there though, you can feel the chocolatey sweetness. There's almost like a little bubble of this stuff right in the very centre of your palate. There's a wee bit of brown sugar but really not too much. You can feel there's just a little tiny bit of a, an almost caramelly flavour as you come a little bit further towards the front of the tongue. Maybe even a little bit of a biscuity note. But as the flavour progresses, you do start to get these almost kind of woody and nutty flavours out of it as well. The complexity, of course, as you would expect with a stout beer, is definitely in the malt base. But it's nice. In fairness, I would I would actually go as far with this one as saying this is one of the uh, of the the best kind of traditional stout beers that I've had in Scotland. The other one that comes to mind, of course, is the one from uh, Antelic, and, and the name of that beer eludes me just now. But there is a really really nice stout beer from Antelic as well. That's these are probably the two best kind of traditional stout beers, along with probably March of the Penguins, I think. And uh, if you can count the uh, the old engine oil from Harveston Brewery, those are probably the two of the best kind of more traditional stout type beers that I've found in Scotland actually. Black Gold from Cairngorm is a nice one as well, but I've not had that in a long time. So that's one that I maybe need to try again at some point. But this is certainly really quite nice. Give this beer a go if you get the chance. On the hoppy side of things, it is pretty much what you'd expect. I do suspect it's English hops that they've used in this one because around the back corners of the palate, you get that typical kind of dark earthiness. Some of the American hops can be used for um, some of the American hops can be used for these these stouts and things like Summit and stuff like that but to me the earthiness that comes out in this one is a little bit more kind of reminiscent of the uh, of the, of the English hops I would say I'm not sure if it's Fugles or exactly what it is maybe more Goldings to be honest just from the floral character because if you come along the front sides of the as you come along the sides of the palate you get just a little bit of a herbal note then it becomes a little bit fr a little bit kind of more very slightly floral but the earthiness does kind of underpin it all and just around the front curve of the tongue you can pick up just a little bit of grassiness from the hop so there is a wee bit of a the, the hoppy characters in this one do have a little bit more of a presence which is quite interesting as well Yeah, you can feel a little bit of that hoppiness, but of course, since it's a stout, it's a dark beer, the malt base really does dominate it, but it's just got a nice level of hoppiness to kind of counteract that. The earthiness that you get from the hops does build a good backbone, or just build a good bridge, I should say, between the, the kind of black malt backbone and, uh, and the nice hoppy characters of the beer. It's, it's just, the flavours in this one just blend together really well. There's nothing kind of being really punchy. It's not too sweet, it's not too bitter, it's just really well balanced, and I can see... As I said, the rating that it has from Rate Beer, um, I think do about does this one justice. It really is. It's quite a nice beer, especially in that kind of traditional uh, stout category. Mm. On the fruity side of things then, as I always say, you get that little oily bubble behind the front of your tongue where those nice kind of fruity esters come out. And for me, there's a little bit of a figgy character to this one. It does have a little bit of a red candied fruit note, but there's not too much in the way of fruit in this. It's just very, very mild, and you can just feel it a little bit more as you go further and further into the aftertaste. That earthy hops linger in there. There's a bit of that kind of black malt backbone, and you can feel the chocolate and some of that kind of cereally character that I was talking about, the woody 
and kind of nutty flavours start to come out a little bit more in the aftertaste as well. Right in the middle of your tongue, you can pick up just a little bit of that nice, almost sweet, nutty note. But in terms of a traditional kind of stout beer, one of, this is probably one of the best ones that you're going to find in Scotland. The one that I was thinking of from Antelic as well was it's Hector something. It's come back into my head. The Hector, I think it's called. Those two, this one and that one, are probably two of the my favourite traditional stouts that I've had in Scotland. March the Penguins from Williams Brothers is really good, and if you can count the uh, the old engine oil from Harvest, and I think that's more of a porter than anything else to be honest though, but these are probably four of the best kind of traditional dark beers I think that you're going to find in, in Scotland here, so try those, but try this one if you get the chance, and try the lightness and the hoppiness from uh, from Loch Ness Brewery as well. I need to try their 80 shilling at some point because I love a good traditional Scotch ale but this one for me is really nice and I think this would be a really really nice beer on cask so hopefully I can try it at one of the real ale festivals sometime but I have to say certainly done a really nice job with this beer and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again so if it sounds like it's up your street I'm sure you will and try some of these Loch Ness beers if you get the chance so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below let me know what your favourite uh, stout beers are, I guess, from Scotland as well. That would be an interesting thing. And let me know what your favourite beers are from the Loch Ness Brewery as well. It's a shame to hear that these guys kind of went insolvent. But I'm sure Cairngorm Brewery do some nice kind, nice kind of traditional beers as well. So I'm sure they will keep up the standard of these Loch Ness beers too. So it's good to see that the brand survived, even though the company had its issues. So until the next time, it's landed just now, and I will catch you guys very soon. The Darkness from the Loch Ness Brewery, now part of the Cairngorm Group up in Aviemore in Scotland. It's landed just now.